everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Mad Wall Poetry Podcast, where today we're going to be talking about chat GBT and AI poetry, because that's something that apparently a lot of people are freaking out about, which, you know, whatever, people are allowed to be freaked out by shit, so... That's cool. We'll talk about that. We are also going to be getting into some comments. I think that's pretty much the the majority of what the show is going to be today. Um, I do want to let you guys know that Friday, this Friday, April 14th, is the last day to get in on your mom. This is the last day to support winner of your mom saw me price for poetry and then you guys never have to hear me talk about this again this will be it this is the last jaunt this is the last push of your mom okay so if you want to get your hands on the most important book of posy to come out this year And get all the extra cool ass shit you get with it. Including my new chapbook runner up. Including an I Hate Matt Wall sticker that you could stick on a surface. To get something like an 8x10 glossy of me on the can. To get all of these things. Tons of poetry. Enough to satisfy you for the next 12 months you need to go to igg.me slash at slash your mom y-e-r-m-o-m links will be down below okay go to there go to there go to there find your tier pick your tier pick what you want And even if you don't want anything and you just want to support, you can do that too. I don't know why you would, but you can. So do that. And hopefully the next time you hear my voice on this show, I will not be fucking talking about that crowdfunding campaign ever again. And we could just get back to normal ass shit now that you've done that. Make sure you give this podcast five stars wherever you listen to podcasts. Well, I don't know if this is, it sounds okay. Um, I just got a phone call, and when I went to answer the phone, I knocked the microphone off the table onto the tile floor, and now there's a big um, scrape ding in the top of my mic. But that's fine, as long as it's fucking working. I don't give a shit what it looks like. I want you guys to listen closely and listen hard as I do the motherfucking shout outs. Yeah. So, here we are, and I want to give a big fucking thank you to all those folks and all the crews who support. So, over on Patreon, Michael Cedar, Harry, thank you guys. Over on the Thank You Crew, Patrick, Britt, J.H., Jan, and Deb, you guys are awesome. Over at the Anarchy Crew, I want to give a thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim J., to Jessica, to Shaylin, to Tim G., to Chill Baby, to Tamara, and to Adam. And then the number one chappies, there's two of them, at the Chapbook of the Month Club, Caitlin and Chase, thank you guys so much. You guys are fucking awesome. And I love the support. And then, for those people who are actually supporting the crowdfunding campaign over there on Indiegogo, I want to give a thank you to Caitlin, to JH, to Bunny, to Shaylin, to Deb, to Chase, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim J, to Brian, and then also to Deborah, to Tamara, to Jeff, to Adam, and to Matthew. Thank you guys so much. You guys are fucking awesome. I appreciate you. All right, and now we can get on with the snow. Okay, so I want to read a comment I got here 
from somebody. Um, this is from David. Um, thank you for this. This was awesome. Um, and this was a comment sent in on episode 60, which was the first um, Case Against Versecraft episode. Which, it, it's only, that's the only episode of that. Um, but this came in, I think, before the last episode went up where I um, did a little more um, chit chat about that. It says, uh, first question is, where did you dig this guy up? <laughs> Second one, why are you giving him so much of your attention? It almost sounds like a turf war, except there isn't any turf. This dispute has been going on for a long time, a hundred years, and it leads to nowhere. I think you, you yourself acknowledge this. Whatever you or I do, it's de facto that we don't want to do it poorly. If I bake a souffle, I hope it comes out all right. But making the best possible souffle that my abilities are capable of is never a goal. It feels like he's engaging in misdirection. What I dislike about his cant is he comes off as a snake oil salesman, selling his optimal method. I'm not saying there's never a place for method in one's practice, but I doubt that the best things get written per method, and regardless, as you affirm, who is the arbiter of what best is? Bizarre stuff. Why waste your time? And I agree. I waste my time at first because it could be interesting to some people to hear about. Um, a lot of the stuff I do on the show is to start conversations, to have kind of like a forum where people can talk about this kind of shit, you know? And it is something that has been done to death and done millions of times over the last hundred years. So, um, yeah, I agree with you there. You made a lot of good points, David, so thank you for writing in for that. Um, J.H. said, Preach the truest truth and all of truthonia. Truthonia. Gosh, I can't even read. Uh, thank you, man. Let me see. Was there anything else in here? Um, oh, I did not see this. Let me see. Thomas says, well, this episode got me steaming mad. <laughs> what Elijah said about searching for truth, I disagree with. He is trying to generalize like religion tries to. We are all seekers of own truth. It is not some singular fucking thing for everyone to bow down to. That is why art is fucking subjective. Poetry has to make a stand now on issues. Now is the time. There have been too many close calls in my own town related to guns in schools. It has to fucking stop. These people love their fucking guns more than their fucking children. What a bunch of greedy, evil motherfuckers. Um, I agree. It, And I don't know if it is much like they're putting their guns above their kids or if they're putting their fear of maybe not having them above their kids. We could get into it and people could start yelling at me about the Second Amendment and I'll just yell back at you with a well-regulated militia. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you obviously don't know what the Second Amendment is, so suck a dick. But anyway. But yeah, um, thank you, Thomas, for that. And that was, um, again... Um, for purpose of politics and poetry. And um, we had a little bit of Elijah at the beginning of that episode, too. Um, so, yeah. Let me see. Is that pretty much it? There's some other things and some well wishes. And um, I appreciate all that. Um, I'll just give this little bit here with um, something that Ethan sent in. He said, dude, when I take a few days off of work, it takes me a few weeks to get caught up. Same with my writing goals. And that's fucking hysterical. And that is way fucking true. Um, and are you still accepting submissions for your upcoming magazine? And yes, I am. So um, I haven't actually um, stated 
that were open for submissions on that. Um, because I feel like what I would like to do, at least for the first few issues, is um, I'm going to be hitting people up individually um, and requesting things from people. Um, so technically we are open for submissions, but at the same time, I'm going to be hitting people up individually anyway. So, um, if you would like to send stuff in, just send it to, um, poetic anarchy press at gmail.com. Um, and just put submission at the top of the email and that would be awesome. And if you end up sending it to I hate Matt gmail.com, um, you can do that too. I just, um, the chances of it getting lost is greater. Super professional over here. This is how we do things. So let's uh, get into this um, AI shit, shall we? So ChatGBT. Okay, so this is coming up for a couple different reasons. I've heard people talking on podcasts about it. I've heard people be making... I've heard people be making YouTube videos about it. Um, I've gotten comments about it. I've gotten emails about it. People asking what I think about AI poetry. I, if I'm worried about it or like what people should be feeling about it. Um, one thing that's hysterical, I don't know if you guys caught this, but Drew Carey uh, did an episode of his podcast with AI where like, I guess it was like a chat GBT um, like the words were from that and then they did an AI Drew Carey sounding voice to voice the episode and they did it just to see if it would work if it could like make an actual podcast episode and it did and this scared a lot of people and freaked a lot of people out and people are fucking losing their goddamn minds over this I've seen a lot of people on YouTube um, talk about... I, I haven't cared enough to fucking watch the videos, but I've seen the thumbnails and the fucking headlines and shit. Where people are actually having ChatGPT write their books and then um, putting the books out on Amazon. Um, I heard that the Writers Guild is now allowing AI-written stuff to be submitted by Writers Guild writers, as long as um, the Writers Guild writer still, it's like their idea and they're taking the credit. But the Writers Guild says that AI written stuff is okay. Now, does all of this scare the shit out of you yet? I guess it could. I guess it very well could scare the shit out of you. Now, what I will say about it is that I wouldn't recommend anyone writing a book with ChatGPT. And the main reason why is because the way AI works is that it scours the internet and gets as much stuff as it can in order to fulfill the question that you have asked of it. Now, if you are asking it to write you a fantasy story, blah, 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 or something, um, the a lot of the stuff that it could be giving you could be from other works. And yeah, some of them might be public domain because that would probably be what the majority of stuff you could find online quickly um, would be. But that's still not great unless you want to just copy stuff and put out public domain stuff. But what I will say too is that there are a lot of works out there that are public domain, but certain aspects of those works are not public domain and those are copyrighted. So like um, like the Edgar Rice Burroughs, John Carter books, um, the word John Carter is copyrighted. Um, all of the character names, all of the places, Barsoom, all that shit, all that's copyrighted. 
even though the actual first story of Princess of Mars is in public domain. Um, Conan's the same way. Like, the Conan stories that were printed in Weird Tales magazine are in public domain, but Conan and Hyboria and um, all of that stuff, Thothamon and um, all of the different characters and stuff like that, those are all copyrighted. So obviously that would be an issue. <coughs> but if somebody put their work up online on the, their blog or something and you ask ChatGPT to create you a fantasy story and it takes like chunks out of, and I don't know if this is something that it would even do, but based off of like what my knowledge of how it works, this could happen. It can be pulling stuff off of somebody else's work and just plopping it into your book. And then if you put that book out, then you have your whole fucking copyright shit you're going to have to deal with. So there's that. There's probably going to be a pretty good market for somebody to put all of their work up on their website in hopes that ChatGBT uses it so then they could turn around and sue people who use it without their consent. Because I guarantee you, this isn't going to be like self-published authors. This is going to be big publishing companies, Hollywood, and all this other shit. So, um, and that's some good money if you're into suing motherfuckers. So, now with poetry. With poetry, I think this is going to be actually quite exciting. Because I feel like if you were to ask ChatGBT to write you a poem, nine times out of ten you would probably get a formal poem. And your formal poem will probably sound okay because it will follow whatever parameters you put. So whatever the form you follow, it will give you those things. Um, I have a feeling that the formal poetry that ChatGBT can come out with will probably read better than free verse poetry that it comes up with. Now, again, I haven't done any of this. I haven't tried any of this. This is my assumptions. And the only reason why I say the formal poetry would probably read better is because there are more parameters. Like, the more rules you give a computer program, the more efficiently it will work. Okay? Okay. So I have a feeling that for formal poetry, this is going to be a bigger deal and it be a scarier situation, especially since um, the one thing that would actually separate poetry like from AI poetry, fuck off, dude, is the thing that most formal poets hate more than anything and that is the lyrical eye. They want the, not all, but a lot, prefer poem, poems written in the idea of the death of the author. You know? So if you keep that up, and you keep like not wanting the um, writer of the poem to have any soul in the actual writing of the poem the poem will then just become something that a program can write. The voice is gone. And a lot of people go, like, argue this with me. This is like one of my um, little debate things that always ends up happening. But it's true. It's like, if you take away the poet from the poem, because the poem to you is much more valuable than the actual poet himself, what is the difference then between a poem and a poem written by AI? Because both of these have the death of the author in mind. Okay? So what's the difference? And this is why I think 
like rock star poets need to fucking happen. This is going to be the thing that makes it clear that something is different, that something is separate. But I think with most um, free verse poetry, the idea behind like AI driven free verse poetry isn't going to be that big of a deal because I think one of the things that free verse poetry has is the poet in mind. And a lot of people, like I was going to do a little talk, but I'm going to let this simmer for a little bit. Um, but the whole lyrical eye thing, like I talked about a second ago, and the narcissistic poetry, the narcissistic po poet. Like, we'll be talking about this, okay? Like, just you wait. But that's the thing that keeps that separate. That is the thing that keeps that not artificial intelligence. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you, if there's a poet that you really love, and you love all their poems, when you read their poems, because you've read so much of their work, like, you know like certain things about the poem that most people wouldn't know because you know so much about the poet himself. Does that make sense? Do you guys follow what I'm saying here? Um, it just makes it a lot more fun, a lot more engaging. As a reader, I appreciate that. And I know a lot of people who read poetry out there do not like read everything by a poet like they might read a poem or two by a poet and really like it and to them it'll be like oh next time i see that name i'll probably give that poem a second look you know like if i see that name pop up in another magazine but most people who like love certain poets don't go reading all of their work and, and i don't know why like if it's not broken don't fix it if you find somebody you like go to town you know it's very monogamous of me. But it's just an interesting thought. It's an interesting way of thinking about it. Now, if I go on ChatGBT, I'm sure I could say, um, write me a poem that sounds like E.E. E. Cummings. And I'm sure I will get something that sounds like that. If I go on there and say, give me a poem that sounds like Bukowski, I'm sure I could get a poem that sounds like Bukowski. But if you are someone who knows a lot about the poet you're asking about, you would probably be able to feel if there's heart in that or not, if there's soul in that or not. Or if it's just like basically a Google search of commonly used words, you know? But if we're talking about formal poetry, I think that's where the the scary part comes. Because it goes, oh, this has to rhyme. Oh, this is the meter that it has to use. Oh, it has to be X amount of lines. Oh, da 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 da, -da. And so once you get all of these parameters, that machine will run. And it will run effectively and efficiently. So, um, and because a lot of formal poetry does, and, and this isn't like me trying to pick a fight here. It's just a lot of formal poetry reads without feeling. Okay. And, and now a lot of you will argue that that's fine, but do know that when you read poetry, I'm sure you come across poems that have like the personality of a plank of wood. Okay? It happens. So just know that. But because you are objectively putting things into a poem that people can fuck with, a poem could be very well written, even if it's written by artificial intelligence. Like, if that's the hill you guys want to die on, that's the cross you're going to have to bear. So just deal with it and figure it out. You know, when it comes down to everything else, having heart in your work is going to be the thing that really makes your work stand apart. And it should be the thing that makes your work stand apart now, 
like whether or not artificial intelligence is involved at all. But if we're just talking about like the fear of AI, that's going to be how it is. And until AI has a soul and could become sentient, (laughs) I think we're going to be okay. I do feel like fiction might like if you thought the fucking hero's journey was kind of like old hat and getting kind of boring like just you wait you know like once ai can figure out a way to do something and have it work that whole if it's not broken don't fix it that's going to be the mantra and like everything will be very formulaic very much so so um if you're writing fiction i would be afraid if you're writing formal poetry i would be afraid if you're writing free verse stuff i i don't think it's going to affect you at all so um yeah just focus on being the badass fucking poet that you are and all that shit will be good i don't think it's going to really affect you very much at all all right So if you have any comments or questions or concerns about AI, or if I got a bunch of shit wrong because I don't know enough about it to actually use it and try to figure it out, um, let me know. Show me where I went wrong and um, change my ways, guys. Change my ways. Help me, help me, help me. So you could send those comments to IHateMattWaltGmail.com or if you are listening to this on YouTube, you could leave a comment down below. And that will be that. Um, And now I guess it's time to plug them butts. All right, so for the butt plugs today, guys, this is it. This is the last time you're going to hear this. Winner of your mom's sodomy prize for poetry. We need your help. Support, support, support. Go to igg.me slash at slash your mom. Links will be down below. Pick your tier. Pick your poison. Pick your perks. Pick what you want, and it will be sent to you. Okay? So, um, that is the last we'll talk about it. You know? But if you've already helped support, thank you so much. Tell somebody else about it or share a post of it online on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or whatever the fuck it is you do your fucking things on. Um, Let some people know about it. There's not much time left. I think it'll be, what, 72 hours by the time you hear this, if you hear it the day it comes out, something like that. So that's it. That's, That's the only call to action I have for you guys this week. Okay, so again, thank you for going on this magical journey of your mom with me. And hopefully the your mom jokes will end after this week as well. And um, in the near future here, episodes of this podcast will be about um, crowdfunding, how to do it, how to do it successfully, how to not do it successfully. Um, And narcissism, that'll be a thing to talk about that'll be fun and other things of that nature and then i'm sure um i'll be doing a um all email episode like a q a episode here pretty soon too so look forward to that um oh and i don't know if this is going to affect next week it might affect the week after but um i am going on a um, trip out to the desert back to my old property to um, just get away for a couple days um, and try to clear my head of noises of helicopters and sirens for a couple days and um, try to just recharge and regroup, clear the brain fog, hopefully. I don't even know if you can do it like that, but we'll see. Just try to fucking have a change of scenery, do some writing, do some reading, um, and get back to basics, you know? So, 
Um, that w- will not be next week, but the following week. So I think next week will be okay. But the following week, there might be a lag in um, episodes coming out because of that. So other than that, um, again, igg.me slash f slash your mom. Go over to uh, youtube.com slash at sign Matt Wall um, to become a member and join the Anarchy Crew and get all of that fun shit. Over a hundred videos of lessons and workshops and fun shit like that. Okay, I'm done. I'm done talking. So, um, until next time, everybody, type hard, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video, and if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.